What's up everybody? Welcome to the Stocks Channel. Today we saw a huge bounce in the NASDAQ 100 going up nearly 4%. Tonight's episode is going to be extremely important and I really suggest you listen to the whole episode and really pay attention to what I'm going to talk about tonight. We're at a very important moment in the market which is going to dictate whether we go into a bull market or continue to spiral downward in this tech correction. The price action is going to be key and I'm going to give you all of the critical levels that you really need to watch very closely. So let's go ahead and start with the NASDAQ 100 Triple Q's ETF. So let's crack open this chart and see what's going on in the stock market today. Also, please remember to smash that like button to help spread this episode to more viewers who could also benefit from this information. So if you're a regular viewer of mine, you know that we've been watching this possible ABC correction very closely, and it did help us catch this bottom around 297 very well. However, it's possible now that after this correction that we're still going to return back into a downward trend and either retest 297 or possibly even break below it and go much lower. So I wanna hammer down into a one hour chart of the triple Qs and I wanna really go through this scenario very closely because the price action at these critical levels during this correction are going to dictate whether we go into a bull market or we continue downward in this downward trend and continue to head lower. Don't forget on the daily chart that we are in a bear trend and we know we're in a bear trend because the price action is below the 50 EMA and all of the moving averages are starting to stack to the bear side. We see the 5 EMA below the 13, and the 13 has also crossed below the 50. All of the moving averages are also negatively sloping, which means we have bearish momentum picking up in the downward direction. Also, to address the elephant in the room, I know that I have a ton of lines on this chart and it's very busy, but I promise you these lines are very important, and without these lines, I wouldn't know what to look for in the price action. So while this is a busy chart, please understand that it's necessary and it's as clean as I could possibly make it without reducing the value of the information I'm providing. So jumping over to this one hour chart, I wanna quickly redraw the ABC correction because it does look quite different on a one hour chart. This is the same ABC correction that I just showed you on the daily chart of the triple Qs. So after this correction, we did go down in five waves for wave C and after we complete five waves, we're looking for an ABC to the upside. If you're a regular viewer of mine, you already know that we were expecting to see an ABC to the upside. Now I did have this ABC finishing right around this resistance trend line. So to be very clear, this downward sloping red line that you see right around where C wave is ending is a resistance trend line because it's suppressing the price action from going higher. Every time we get up to that resistance level, the price action gets rejected and we resume the downtrend. So as long as we're in a downtrend, we need to respect the trend because the trend is our friend. As you know, I love following the trend and I only say that the trend reverses when the price action confirms it. So until we get a price action close over this resistance level, I'm still bearish on the NASDAQ 100 because the trend is downward. A downtrend is defined by lower highs and lower lows and we definitely have that scenario in this market. Right now in the one hour chart, we're currently forming higher highs and higher lows so we need to respect that in the very immediate term, but we're also expecting a corrective ABC to the upside, which means that the downtrend will resume after the correction is over. So in order to invalidate this downtrend, we need to see the price action do something like this, where we break out, retest the breakout as support, and then form a higher high on the one hour chart. Without this price action, I'm not going to get bullish on the NASDAQ 100. I'm going to remain bearish until I see the price action break out of resistance, bounce off of that resistance level as support, and then continue to uptrend. No matter what the market's going to do, the price action cannot lie to us. That's why you always hear me say that price action is king, because without watching the price action, we're strictly guessing what's gonna happen. So while I don't know what's gonna happen in the future, I definitely know what I'm watching for, and once I see a scenario play out, I know exactly how to trade this market. That's the difference between guessing and understanding how to do technical analysis correctly and putting the odds in your favor. Nobody truly knows what's going to happen, but if you've been following along on my channel, you can definitely see some precision in some of the callouts that I've made, even though it doesn't happen exactly to the number that I give, you should definitely see the patterns playing out that I've been talking about now for a couple of weeks. So this is the bull scenario that we're watching for on a breakout of our resistance trend line. Just so you know, it's possible that we don't even get up to that resistance trend line. In a bear scenario where selling picks up, it's very possible that we're going to top out before we get to that level because sometimes the market loves to trick people. If the market knows everybody is watching for that resistance trend line, it's very possible we saw the top today 
and 314 level that I was talking about on the Discord server as critical resistance could have been the top and we could have actually seen the C wave ending today right around that level around 314. So in this scenario, we would see the price action get rejected at one of these resistance levels, possibly even a retest of that level once again, and then a continuation of the downtrend. Once the price action takes out this low and we see it rejecting at resistance, we'll know that the downtrend is picking up momentum again and we're expecting to see prices back in that 297 range. If we break down below support at this critical level at 297, that's when I'm going to start looking for triple Q's levels around $280. So these are very, very critical resistance and very critical support levels that you need to watch the price action at. There's no tricks and there's no magic in the stock market. We're strictly identifying a trend. We're finding the resistance levels as well as the support levels. And then we're watching how the price action behaves in those areas. That's how we set ourselves up to do a successful trade and get a good risk reward ratio that allows us to remain profitable in this market. So just a heads up in the Stocks Channel Discord, I'm giving updates on the hour of exactly what's going on in this volatile market. If that sounds useful to you, check out how you can join the Stocks Channel Discord by clicking on the link in the description of the video. I got a lot of positive feedback on these intraday updates, so I'm going to continue to do them and help you navigate through this volatile market. So now that you know the critical resistance levels are at 314 and our resistance trend line, which is also around 315 or 316, those are the levels I want you to watch very closely for a possible breakout in a bull scenario or a rejection in a continuation of the downtrend for a bear scenario. Remember that the price action is key and how it behaves at those levels is ultimately going to matter way more than the levels themselves. So the next thing I want to cover in the NASDAQ 100 triple Qs is a possible extension of the C wave. In this scenario, wave C is only completed in a wave one and this ABC is completing a wave two. So in this scenario, we only completed a wave one, possibly completing a wave two, and we're going to continue lower in a wave three. We'll expect to see a wave four and then a wave five to complete out this correction and then we could possibly see a bottom. Right now I'm favoring somewhere around $280 for the bear scenario, so pay very close attention to these resistance levels. If we fail to break out and start closing below 297, just understand that it's possible that we go much lower. So I always favor being defensive in these scenarios because right now we're at a crossroads and we're either going into a bull market or we're going to continue this downtrend and head into a bear market. When you're not sure what's going to happen, it's better off to just take all your chips off the table and let the price action confirm which scenario is going to play out. Now in a bull scenario, we're going to break out of this resistance and then we should likely start impulsively moving to the upside. But until we break out of resistance, I'm going to favor the bear scenario. Remember the trend is your friend, so the bias in the market is going with the trend which is still down. Just like in the bull market when the trend was bullish, we had bias to the up direction. Right now we're in a downtrend, so I have bias to the bear scenario. Okay, let's clean up this chart a little bit and get a little deeper into some of these support levels. If we did top out at resistance around 314 today, there's still a lot of support levels below that we could bounce off of. So watch support at 309, 30750, 302, and then of course the critical support level is going to be all the way down at 297. Whether or not we actually retest 297 will be determined by the price action. Don't forget it's possible at any of these support levels that we could see a bounce and we could retest this resistance level. So it's so critical right now to watch these levels and continue to be disciplined because it's going to be volatile and the market is definitely going to try to trick the retail investors. It's very common also to get a false breakout. So be patient and wait for that confirmation of a breakout as support before you get too bullish. It's possible that a false breakout does something like this and then we continue the downtrend and a lot of people bought up here get trapped as the market goes lower. Okay, so just a quick recap, we're going back to the daily chart and don't forget that we still have a lot of volume on the selling. When we see a lot of volume on selling like this, it means that there's still a lot of panicking, there's still a lot of sector rotation, and there's still a lot of big money players that are selling their positions. We're better off just being patient and waiting to see which scenario is going to play out. So I know a lot of you really enjoyed this ABC correction in the last couple of weeks, but right now we're at a crossroads and we need to be patient before we know exactly what's gonna happen in the future. But right now we're at a crossroads and we're just going to continue to watch the price action before we get too overly bullish or too overly bearish. All right, next up is the S&P 500 SPY ETF. And we saw the SPY going up 1.43% today. The price action closed below a negative sloping 20 simple moving average and we're still in a short term bear trend. So just like with the NASDAQ 100, we wanna to continue to be defensive while we're in a downtrend 
and the price action is closing below a negative sloping 20 simple moving average. Now the important thing to notice on SPY is we did test that resistance trend line today. We actually broke out on a one hour candle and we hung around that resistance trend line which should have acted as support in a bull scenario for about three hours before we ultimately flushed near the close and closed right on top of the 13 EMA. So this could be a false breakout or it could just be the first attempt at that resistance level before we try to break out yet again. So don't forget it's possible that we test that level multiple times, but we're still looking for a confirmation and a resumption of the bull rally before we get bullish on this market. Remember that we're trying to enter on a bounce of support. That will prevent us from getting caught into a scenario where it looks like we're gonna break out and then we come right back down and start flushing down to the downside. You don't wanna get caught in a bull trap because it's very painful and it's going to make you question a lot of life decisions. Just be patient and wait for that retest because that patience is going to pay off and you're not likely going to be on the wrong side of the trade if you're just patient. So remember, we're looking for something like this because we don't want something like this to happen. That's where the discipline and the patience really pay off in your trading game. So right now, the SPY is also telling us to be very defensive because it does look like we're failing to break out of this resistance. Obviously, that's subject to change and that's where the price action is going to be key. You can see that we also closed below this previous high and normally those previous resistance levels should act as support and it did not hold up going into the close. You can see we had a spike of volume into the close as well. So there was definitely a lot of sellers that stepped in and sold their positions into the close. So these are all just warning signs at this point. Currently on the one hour chart, we're definitely building up bullish momentum. And until the price action proves otherwise, we still have higher highs and potentially a higher low forming, which means we could still break out of this resistance. So don't take this information and just assume that the market has to go lower just because we failed to break out at the first attempt. I know I say it a lot, but I'm going to say it again. Let the price action dictate what this market is going to do from here. So going back to the daily chart, I want you to watch the support levels that are right around 385, 384, and 381. If we start breaking below 381, we're getting very close to breaking back below the 50 EMA, which is a bearish price action move. The 50 EMA is currently sitting right around 380. And if we break below that, we do have support at 377 and 374. So there's still a ton of support to the downside, but we have to respect the fact that we're in a downtrend and we want to be cautiously optimistic about a potential breakout until we see the price action confirm it. Upside resistance levels are still the 20 simple moving average at 387, our resistance trend line, which is right around 389, and then our previous all time high around 393. Next up is the Dow Jones ETF, and we saw the Dow Jones getting very close to hitting my price target yet again, right around 322. Remember, that is all time high territory for the Dow Jones, but we continue to fail to close at those levels. So we're definitely seeing a lot of sellers coming in at those levels and dumping their positions. That doesn't mean we can't go higher, but you can see huge wicks on top of these candles, which means that there is a lot of selling pressure as we break over 320. Now, don't forget that the triple Qs and the S&P 500 were also at critical resistance today. So the Dow Jones getting very close to my price target is also considered a critical resistance level. If we continue to see a lot of sellers stepping in at these resistance levels, eventually the bears are going to win and the sellers are going to drive the price lower. So price action can be interpreted a lot of different ways. But when I see resistance levels failing across the board, that doesn't make me feel very bullish. We see a lot of sellers on all three indices when all three indices are also at critical resistance levels. So pay attention to that because if we break above those resistance levels, that gives more bullish probabilities that we're likely going higher. So it works in either direction. We just need to see the price action tell us which direction it's going to play out. On the Dow Jones, we also have resistance at 320. So watch 320 and 322 as possible upside resistance. And to the downside, we have support at 316 the 20 simple moving average at 315 and our previous all time high at 313. The 50 EMA is also going to be support if we get there, which is at 310. Next up is the Art K ETF. And we saw Art K having a very bullish day going up 10.42%. Now we can't celebrate too much after this massive sell off, even though that is a very nice bounce. We still have a lot of ground to make up to get back to the bullish prices. Resistance levels are going to be at 124, our resistance trend line around 129 and the 50 EMA, which is also near our resistance level around 134 or 135. Downside support should be 117, 
our support trend line at 111, and then our next support level is down around 105. So don't forget that the ARK ETF has a lot of tech, and if we see tech continue to sell off and failing to break the resistance, I would not be surprised to see ARK go down to about 105 or possibly even the high 90s. You can see we're in a strong bear trend still, and the price action did close over the 5 EMA, but we have a ton of resistance above that we have to break through to get back into a bull market. On the VIX, which is our fear indicator, we saw fear leaving the market today, going down 5.65%. However, the VIX is still in a bull trend, and the price action is still holding up over the 20 simple moving average. So it's still possible the VIX could bounce off of these levels and go higher as soon as tomorrow. We really want to see the VIX start heading back to 21 and a half or possibly even as low as 20 before we start getting bullish on this market yet again. Remember that to be bullish, we need to have low fear in the market. While the VIX is over 24, that's not low fear and it means that fear could escalate at any point. So be defensive because there's a lot of warning signs in the stock market and the VIX is one of them. We're in a bull trend holding up above support and we're just a few ticks away from closing back above resistance levels and trying to form a daily higher high, which is somewhere around 29 to the low 30s. On the US dollar, we did spike back above resistance, but we did flush out and close below resistance. Like I said last night, the dollar is going parabolic and I think it really needs to cool off. At these levels, I'm not too concerned about the dollar because it's still relatively weak, but we do need to keep a close eye on it because a strong dollar could impact the stock market eventually. Watch support levels down around 91.80. On gold, it does look like we did get a bounce off support today and we could be well on our way towards the price target at 1760. So watch to see if support will hold up at 1685 and if it does, we're looking for a price target right around 1760. On silver, we also bounced off support which is right around 25 and it looks like we're well on our way to retesting the 50 EMA which is right around 2625. If we break over the 50 EMA, there's one more price target above at 2656. On Bitcoin, we're currently up about 3.91% and we're coming right into that resistance level around 55,000. Remember that all three indices got to resistance today and Bitcoin is currently sitting at resistance as well. So I do believe that Bitcoin could predict the future in the stock market. So if we see Bitcoin breaking over resistance overnight, that could tell us that we're likely going to have a bullish day in the stock market. However, to the bearish side, if we see Bitcoin failing to break through 55,000, that could be an indication that Bitcoin is topping out and it's forming a lower high on the daily chart. We still do look like we're forming higher lows, so it's possible Bitcoin is just in a consolidation wedge and it's getting ready to break to the upside or the downside. So when we get into these consolidations, we don't wanna make any assumptions, we just wanna be patient and wait to see which direction Bitcoin's going to break. So right now to the bull side, we need to break over 55,000 and the bearish scenario on Bitcoin would be breaking down below the wedge and heading back down towards the 50 EMA, around $44,500. So we need to continue to watch Bitcoin very closely because if it's going bullish, that gives us more bullish probabilities in the stock market. On Amazon stock, we had a very bullish day going up 3.76%, but we did hit that resistance level at 3090 and get rejected. So that's still the price target and we need to break back above that level before possibly retesting the 20 simple moving average, which is now around 3160. Support levels are still around 3033 and 2950. On Tesla, we had a very wild ride today going up nearly 20%. This is absolutely a short squeeze because too many people got overly bearish on Tesla. Remember that I said it's possible Tesla's finishing a fifth wave to the downside, which came right down to that perfect price target of around 557. The buyer stepped in at that level and it triggered a short squeeze and we saw Tesla blasting right through resistance at 618. We came all the way up to the 13 EMA and that's where we found resistance for the day. That level was right around 676, so we need to break over that level to test our resistance level at 695. Now I will say with this bounce that we really need to start seeing some positive price action closing over the 50 EMA. You can see the 20 simple moving average is getting ready to cross below the 50 EMA, which means that this could just be a dead cat bounce in Tesla before it goes even lower. So don't get overly bullish on Tesla just because it had one good day. We still need to see price action closing back above $720 and we need to repair the bearish trend and try to form a bullish trend. I don't suggest trying to catch a falling knife and right now, I still have to label Tesla a falling knife until we see confirmation of this bounce. A dead cat bounce can be very convincing, but it's still just a dead cat bounce until it reverses the bearish trend. On Apple stock, we also had a very bullish day. We went up over 4% and we did close over that resistance at 120. Don't forget that it's possible Apple is still in a fifth wave to the downside, which could bring Apple all the way down to 114. 
In the bearish scenario where the NASDAQ 100 and the triple Qs go to 280, I would not be surprised to see Apple going to 114. However, if Apple did bottom around 116 and it's starting to head higher, don't forget it's also a market moving stock. So if Apple is going higher, don't expect to see the NASDAQ 100 going lower. So the next resistance level for Apple to break above is right around 122. If Apple breaks over 122, that will give us more bullish probability odds that the NASDAQ 100 is done correcting and we're ready to go higher. The next resistance level on Apple is 124. On the financial sector, we finally saw some selling going down 0.91%. We're still holding up above a positive sloping 5 EMA with a very strong bull trend, so there's nothing to worry about quite yet. On the industrial sector, we went down 0.41%, but again, we're still holding up above the positive sloping 5 EMA with a very healthy bull trend. The energy sector dropped about 1.75%, but still holding up with bullish price action and bullish trending. On healthcare, we went up 0.59%, and it does look like healthcare is starting to put in a little bit of a pivot. Is this going to be enough to reverse the bear trend in healthcare and go back into a bull trend? Only the price action can determine that. So we need to see price action get back above the 20 simple moving average and we need to start building up some bullish trending in healthcare. So going back to the S&P 500, we still do see bullish sectors in financials, industrials and energy. We saw a very nice tech bounce today and we also see healthcare slowly creeping back up. So while we do still have plenty of reasons to be bullish on this market, we also have plenty of reasons to be defensive and continue to monitor that bear trend that we have in the NASDAQ 100. So as long as the tech correction continues to go on and we see tech selling off, I don't expect to see the S&P 500 go any higher than where we're currently at. Remember that the S&P 500 is over 30% tech sector, so there's no way it's going to new all-time highs while the tech sector is selling off. So just be patient and be very disciplined in this volatile market. We're very close to knowing if we're going higher or lower from these levels, we just need to see more price action, which we'll see in the very near future. Don't forget on the Stocks Channel Discord, I'm doing intraday updates to help you stay on the right side of this market. Whether the market is bearish or bullish, it doesn't matter. You just need to understand which side it's on so that you can trade accordingly. If you're interested in the Stocks Channel Discord, you can find out how to join by clicking on the link in the description of this video. So next up, let's take a quick look at our hot stock, which is still Lockheed Martin. And we did see Lockheed Martin getting sold off today, going down over 1%. We're closing back below the 20 simple moving average. And at this rate, it looks like we're coming back down towards support around 333. Look for a possible bounce off of that support level and heading back up to our price targets at 340 and 344 yet again. Remember that when a stock is chopping around in a range like this, it's very good for traders. You're looking to buy off of the support levels and sell at resistance or shorting at resistance and covering at support. So take advantage of the volatility in this market if you're a disciplined trader, but don't forget to remain disciplined. Don't let a trade go against you and then you end up holding that position while it's a losing trade. Be disciplined and there's a lot of money that you can make in this market. I've also been adding a lot of new hot stocks to the Stocks Channel Discord. So if you're looking for more hot stocks to trade, come check us out at the Stocks Channel Discord. You can find out how to join by clicking on the link in the description of this video. So thanks for watching everybody. Remember to stay disciplined and stay patient in this volatile market. And as always, I will see you in the next episode.